video, I want to look at the central limit theorem, both what it says and how to use it. While I won't give the formal statement of the theorem, I will kind of explain what it is telling us. It basically tells us that if our sample size is big enough, I can use the normal distribution to answer questions about sample means, even if my original set was not normal. The only difference is that instead of the standard standard deviation, I'm going to use sigma divided by the square root of n, the standard deviation from my sampling distribution. The mean from the sampling distribution was the same. The only thing that changes is this value of the standard deviation. So I'll have to update my standard deviation. So the first question I want to look at is what do we actually mean by big enough? Well, if our original variable was normally distributed, then there is nothing we need to consider. Any sample size would work. But if our original variable is not normal, or we're not sure if it's normal, then we need our sample size to be greater than or equal to 30 in order to use this. This is an approximation. And the larger the sample size, the better the approximation will be. So let's look at a couple of examples. IQ is normally distributed and it has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So what's the probability that an individual has an IQ below 90? I'm going to start by drawing my normal distribution and shading the appropriate area. So here I have my curve. 100 is our mean, so it's at the center. 90 is somewhere to the left, and I've shaded below 90 since I want the IQ below 90. In R, I would use the command p norm, comma 90, comma 100, comma 15. I want the probability that it's below 90, my mean is 100, and my standard deviation is 15. Since for this particular problem I'm looking at an individual, my sample size is just 1. So I don't have to divide by the square root of the sample size, since that would be dividing by 1. This is just a normal distribution problem. I can type this into R as well and get about 25.2 or 25.2%. Next, what is the probability that a sample of 20 people has an average IQ below 90? This time I'll need to change my standard deviation since I do in fact have a sample size. I have an N here. So this time it would be P norm of 90 comma 100, comma 15 divided by the square root of 20. 90, since that's the value I want lower than, 100 is the mean, and then my new standard deviation is 15 divided by the square root of 20. For this one, we get about 0 .001 or about 0.1%, significantly smaller. This kind of sampling distribution and these means are going to kind of make my normal distribution more centered around the mean. So I should expect a lot less area in the tails as my sample size increase.